Hey, welcome back. We're going to do another, hopefully relatively quick, um, retrospective review video. Because kind of in tandem with me playing Wing Commander 3, I was also playing Final Fantasy 3. And so, I just recently beat Final Fantasy 3, if you've been following the videos. So I have the webpage pulled up right here on Steam for Final Fantasy 3. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, obviously I was playing the 3D remake. And if I hit back real quick, you'll notice that there's the, the new Final Fantasy 3 Pixel Remaster that just came out, um, I don't know, maybe a, a couple weeks ago or a week ago or so. Anyway, we're not reviewing that one. We're reviewing this one. And we're pausing the video. So, um, I guess my, uh, my thoughts, um, got quite a few thoughts on it. Uh, basically, to call this a modern game it is kind of a um, well not entirely true it's more of a retro game in modern clothing as it were because the original game came out in 1990 on the original Nintendo or technically the Famicom because it was never released over here in the US at least on, on the Nintendo it wasn't so we didn't get to see it till you know many years later and originally this version of the game came out on the DS so this is the DS game for all intents and purposes you know cleaned up um, running at a higher resolution and things of that nature so I will definitely say that having never played any version of Final Fantasy 3 and this being my first exposure to it I did enjoy my time with it it was actually uh, really good um, I, I'm not going to say I had to do a lot of grinding, per se. I did have to do a little bit. Um, but I wouldn't say I had to do, you know, tens of hours of grinding just to be able to, you know, make progress in the game. Now, having said that, uh, the one boss, Garuda, uh, in Saronia, that guy was just absolutely insane. And so, yeah, I did have to do a lot of grinding with everybody in my party being uh, Dragoons. And that was actually probably the worst part of the game from a gameplay perspective. Uh, it was definitely just a chore to get all my Dragoons up to a level and have them all equipped with decent weaponry so they could actually beat the guy. So that was pretty bad, but that was just a small lull for all intents and purposes. The game itself, I mean... The opening cinematic was actually very impressive. One of the things I would actually kind of ding it on is like, that was the only time we ever got to see that type of cinematic. You know, you think maybe in the end game or something, there'd be some sort of cinematic for the end game, but there wasn't. So that's kind of a bit of a letdown. But you know, other than that, the graphics were actually really good. And um, the whole job system that's in the game, it's... It's really neat, very flexible. I mean, I guess there's a lot of choice there for people. I, I was preferring to use more speedy attacking kind of guys. Um, but if you wanted to, uh, I guess, go with a whole bunch of tanks or whatnot, you could, you could theoretically do that. Um, so, yeah, it definitely gives you a, a sense of customization to fit your own personal taste, which I definitely did kind of like. Um, but let me go ahead and just show a couple of the um, web pages I used to help me out here and there as I needed, give myself some sort of idea. Now I didn't really have to reference the guides too much for all intents and purposes, but this guy right here on Strategy Wiki, it was very good. Uh, well, I have it up here with the um, the job sets where he basically describes all the jobs, and I guess there are some party suggestions and whatnot here. One of the problems with this guide to a certain extent was the fact that it it almost was more written for the NES game, really. And but you know, I, I did find like like down here the appendices where you know you have the weapons, the armors, all the magic, and you're like, hey, where'd I go to get this spell or can I go to get the spell? So it's all listed there or the armors and things of that nature. So it's very good. Um, the walkthrough is pretty decent. It breaks it down by, you know, when you have earth crystal, water crystal jobs, 
you know, aspects like that. But even having said that, um, I didn't really have to access it too terribly much, but every now and then I did. So this is a, a good resource that I used. Now this guide right here from Games Radar, I also found this one on GameFAQs. So on GameFAQs, the exact same guide is listed, um, what do they call it? Basically the job stats guide or something. That's, that's the, the link to it. So you can either go to GameFAQs or you can go to Games Radar and pull up this guide. It definitely has a lot of really good information in it. One of the things you can do is you can uh, like go down to say a job like we'll, we'll start with Freelancer because it's right here and you can say okay what's the best weapons I can use, what's the best armor this class can use um, and it even tell you like what kind of what kind of MP you have, what your stats will be depending upon your character level overall and so it's just um, a, a really good guide to give you as a reference but not something that you you know have to go back to constantly to, to see what you're doing. Probably another really good guide I use was right here from the Steam community you know which is very appropriate considering this is a Steam game and this one starts off it's great it tells you the missable achievements and so I definitely use this one fairly decently like the treasure chest list and the monster list those two guides are really good so you can go in there and say okay where can I miss something and so basically just following this first part right here you're not going to miss any of the achievements now having said that this part right here is kind of one of the things as far as if you are an achievement hunter on Steam this is where it's going to be a little difficult and I, I personally um, am missing three achievement now three achievements now um, completing the bestiary this one right here defeat the iron giant and the jack of all trades one now if you can beat the iron giant you'll get that achievement and the uh, bestiary well if you follow the uh, bestiary guy to make sure you've you've uh, gotten every creature so that guy's def definitely very helpful for sure so you just need to get up to a, a very high level character level not job level um, so right now I've I've gone through the game a couple more times so I'm at about level 68 right now and that's nowhere near high enough to be able to beat this iron giant I accidentally walked in there once and uh, didn't realize how short of a path it was to get to him and so he popped up and basically just murderized me like immediately <laughs> it was almost comically bad how quickly I died um, but that last achievement there the jack of all trades man that's a bad one <laughs> it's so bad I mean if it was just get level 99 with all jobs so basically there's a card you get when you unlock a job so 23 cards if it was just that it wouldn't be too terribly bad unfortunately it is not you've got to get level 99 all jobs with all four characters that's just insane I don't know if I like the game enough to try and do that I mean I do want to try and get all the cards so I will be playing it off and on here to do it to do that I right now I have three out of 23 cards so still got quite a ways to go to unlock all the other ones but I don't know that that achievement is just that's one of those achievements like do I really like the game that much and I don't know the answer to that <laughs> I mean I do like the game it is a very fun game and I think you will enjoy your time here um, Obviously, it's a Final Fantasy game, so the music is just just great. And I will say one of the biggest surprises, pleasant surprises with the game, is the fact that with Steam and their beta client, this thing works absolutely flawlessly. 
on Linux. Now I'm running Kubuntu 18.04 on this current setup and I didn't have a single issue whatsoever running it on Linux. It was just absolutely perfect. Um, I wish I had almost played it from beginning to end so I could say, hey, I played it from beginning to end and I had no issues, but when I started playing it, I started off on Windows 10 and so I probably only about the last quarter of the game did I actually play it under Linux. But, you know, I think with the time that I've played on it, it, it definitely is something I can say, yeah, I'll probably be able to play from beginning to end, no issues. It's definitely perfect as far as that's concerned. So that's great. Um, depending upon your platform or choice, I have a feeling that this game not only will it run, it will run, you know, perfectly. Whether you're running a Windows machine, a Linux machine, probably a Mac based machine, I'm not entirely sure on that one. I'm trying to see here, do they even have any uh, system requirements on here? Ah, who knows. Anyway, I'm sure if it can run on Linux, there's probably people in the, the Mac community who know how to get it running on Mac as well. I'm just not that familiar with the Mac uh, OS, so I can't really you know, comment on it one way or the other. But I will definitely say as far as Windows and Linux, it ran great. So, how much did I like this game? What would I give it as far as a, an actual score? Now, obviously this is a Steam uh, game, so, you know, Steam is basically either recommended or not recommended. So as far as Steam is concerned, definitely a recommendation, and I'll definitely write that up here soon. I'll say it's a, a recommended game for sure. Um, if I go back to my the GOG scale that I've been using for the other games I've reviewed so far, I don't know. Let me think. I'm not going to say it's a perfect game because it's not. Um, but you know what? I enjoy my time. It was definitely enjoyable time almost from beginning to end there's you know like I said a few quibbles Garuda was a, a pain of a boss to beat I, I did have to look up some information on how to beat the final boss because I had no idea that you had to use physical attacks on one tentacle magic attacks on the other or you could just ignore that one that you had to use magic attacks on and uh, so that, that was a little bit of guide use needed but not a lot but for those two bosses I definitely had to you know, get some some help. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a four and a half out of five. Technically, you can't give half stars on GOG, which is kind of a shame. But hey, it's my rating system. So I'll say four and a half out of five. Definitely a good good game, worth your time. Um, let's see, right here. I mean, standard price fifteen ninety nine. You know, like a lot of things on Steam, this thing goes on sale all the time. Yeah, I don't know if it's worth paying full price for. And the fact of the matter, like I said, it's Steam. You know it's going to go on sale eventually. Definitely getting it on sale, it, it's a no-brainer. If you're a fan of Final Fantasy, let me put it that way. If you like Final Fantasy games... If you're a fan of the old school Final Fantasy games, like the stuff that I grew up with, I mean, when I was younger, I played the first Final Fantasy on NES, and then I played what we called Final Fantasy II on the Super NES. So that's kind of what I grew up with. And for you know people who are fans of that older style Final Fantasy and whatnot, it's it just goes without saying. This is definitely a great version. I'm not really sure about the whole pixel remaster. Um, I mean, I don't really have any interest in buying the game twice. And I guess that's kind of a bit of a letdown, the fact that Square basically is releasing the same exact game, one with a 3D skin, one with an old pixel-based skin. So you got to flip a coin and see which one you'd rather have, basically. Um, I don't know. It's, well, this one's even more expensive. That's kind of crazy. I mean... It looks okay, just looking at the screenshots and whatnot here. But I mean, oh, there, there, there's old Garuda, piece of crap. Oh, and they're all, <laughs> they're all uh, dragoons. I mean, it looks fine, but 
the three D game looks better, so I don't know why this one would be more expensive. That's just that's just laziness, Square. That's just laziness. Yeah, I'd probably recommend the three D remake over this one if you had to buy anything. And I don't even know from a content perspective if everything's in this one or not. Hmm. Anyway, definitely recommended. I'd say about a four and a half out of five would be my score. And uh, yeah, it was really fun playing Final Fantasy III. And I hope you all give it a shot. Well, that's it for this video. I'll see you all in the next one. Take care.